Outdoors. I'm Allison Hinson, and today we're going to be talking about how to get a loan to buy a house. For many people, buying a house is something they want to do, and we're going to talk about how to get that special loan called a mortgage so you can buy a house of your own. And our guest today is Kaylee Deering. You are a mortgage loan officer That's with correct. Bangor Savings yes. Bank here in Scarborough, Maine. So welcome to the show. Thank you, Allison. So was my definition of a mortgage correct? It's just a fancy name for the loan that you get to buy a house. Yep, basically it's just the, it's the legal agreement between the bank and the borrower that they agree to lend money at an interest rate and they in turn take a lien on the property. So That's that really means the is. bank really owns the house. Until, yep, until you either pay the loan off or um, if there was a situation where you couldn't pay the loan off, then the bank would would take the house. So that's how that works. So it's it's a loan and I know that I have to pay it back yep. or else the bank becomes the owner instead of me. Exactly. And I'm assuming that that happens very rarely. Most most people go in and get a mortgage and they live in the house, they make their payments and they are homeowners. Exactly. Yes, it's very rare that something like that would happen. It's usually you have found the house, you agree to the certain terms and conditions you sign and then the house is yours. That brings us to the first question I have is how do you know if you're ready for home ownership? How do you know if you know you really can handle this? Because it's probably the biggest amount of money that anybody will ever borrow is sure. because the loan means you're going to the bank and you're asking them to let you borrow money. How do you know if you're ready for home ownership? So technically anybody that is of the age that they can enter into a legal contract can apply for home ownership. So anybody 18 or over could walk in and say, I wanna buy a house. Yes, but that doesn't necessarily mean that maybe they're ready to buy a mm -hmm. house. So typically when people are starting to think about it, especially you're hearing now rents are really high and there's a they lot are. of conversations about how, oh, you your mortgage could be less than what you're paying in mm -hmm. rent or it's a good investment. Um, but it really comes down to the person themselves being ready. Um, usually I tell people you want to have some type of savings to make sure that you are ready for home ownership, things yeah. to come, um, repairs, improvements, things like that, unexpected expenses that mm -hmm. go along with owning a house. You also want to have a stable income that is coming in so that you feel comfortable that you know that you can make your payments every month. Um, and you also then really want to understand what the budget is that you have that you can set aside for a mortgage. And lastly, you want to have an idea about your credit and if your credit is at a place where you can qualify for a mortgage. So there's a difference between wanting to buy a house then and being financially prepared. Exactly. Even mentally prepared. Yeah. Before we bought a house, my husband and I would go to Home Depot, you know, on Friday nights and walk around and think, oh, wow, if we had a house, we could do this and this. And then I remember we bought our house and we went into it and we went to throw out some garbage and we thought, we don't even own a garbage can. So you know, the first thing we had to do was go to Home Depot and then buy a garbage can. And that's what I think you need savings for. You walk into your house and you think there's nothing there. It's right. all you. You have to then come up with the money to go buy the garbage can or buy the shower curtain or buy the, you know, the rod to hang your your towels on. It's all on you. And something that's what you need. Something to sit on, something to sleep on if you don't you yeah. know, already have certain things. Yeah, it's, it is, uh, it's a big, it's probably the biggest commitment that you will take um, financially. So uh, yes, it is, it's important to be prepared. How do I then go get a mortgage? Say I think I'm prepared. So I think in my mind, I've got the money set aside. So you talked about credit. Maybe I've looked and realized that, yeah, my credit score is good. And I've looked at my budget and think, you know, I think I'm ready. I've done all the things you mentioned. I think I'm ready. Now what do I do? Yep. So there are lots of places that you can go and get a mortgage. Usually it's through a financial institution. So like a bank, credit union? Bank, credit union, um, mortgage broker. You can, um, you can do them through somebody that's local 
or you can do it through somebody that's national. You mean a bank or? Both, you can use um, like a, a company that is an, a national bank or a national mortgage broker. What's a mortgage broker? So a mortgage broker tends to be somebody that is not um, a financial institution that offers both loans as well as deposits. So they're really more of a specialized shop that just focuses on mortgages. So a bank will give me my checking account and my savings account, maybe do a car, but a mortgage broker is just going to offer me that loan to get a house. Exactly. Um, and then there's also situations where the mortgage may, once you actually close on that mortgage, it may stay with those financial institutions. Typically when it is through a mortgage broker, it doesn't stay there. It ends up going to another financial institution. But that doesn't matter to me, really. No, it doesn't matter. It's, it doesn't change the terms or the conditions of the loan that you agreed to. It just changes who you're making the payment to. So let's say I'm, you know, it's so easy to get on realtor.com or get on the internet and start cruising, Let you know, cruising the, um, the homes for sale. Let's say I think I'm ready and I go out there and I find this cute little house that I would love to have. Do I just go into the bank and say, here, oh, look, I want to buy this one? Sure. Well, it can be intimidating and overwhelming when you're not sure where to start. Mm -hmm. So typically, what I would tell you is do what you're comfortable with. Um, if you're comfortable speaking with somebody in person, start with your own financial institution. Usually people have a checking account mm -hmm. or a savings account somewhere, and you're comfortable with the people that maybe are at that branch. And go in and talk to the people in the branch and say, geez, I, I'd like to talk to somebody about a mortgage. And they're wonderful, and they'll help set you up with mm -hmm. who you need to be with. If you're more comfortable talking with somebody on the phone, then I would do the same thing. I would start with someone that you know that you're comfortable with at maybe your own financial institution and call and explain what you're looking for. The people on the phone are designed to maybe ask a few questions and they'll point you to the right person. So they're not asking me the questions to discourage me. They're just asking the questions to find out who should you talk to next? Exactly. They're going to ask you questions like, what's the most convenient location for you? Would you prefer to talk to somebody on the phone or would you prefer to go in and see someone? Um, they're trying to narrow it down to make it most convenient and most comfortable for you. And then lastly, you can also apply for mortgages online. So you could send an inquiry through an online system mm -hmm. of a financial institution if you prefer to do it that way. So pretty much any way nowadays you can apply. Um, but what you want to do is you want to talk to somebody that really, if you're in the very beginning stages mm -hmm. and you're not sure, I don't know how much I can qualify for, I don't really know what my credit score is, sit down with somebody and just let them know that I'm in early stages and I want to get what's called pre-qualified. So people are actually willing to do that. I can walk in and say, you know, here's the pretty house I want to buy. Yeah. And they'll, they will start then by asking the beginning questions. Have you, you said pre-qualified. Does that mean like the, the bank or credit union has kind of blessed you and said, here's how much you can borrow? Yeah, so typically when you find that beautiful, pretty house uh -huh. that you're really excited about and you see that, you know, this, this house is listed by a certain realtor and you want to jump right on and call that realtor, yeah. oftentimes the realtor will ask you, have you been pre-qualified yet? And that just means the bank has said you're allowed to borrow up to so much money. Exactly. And so everybody's um, terms are slightly different. Sometimes it's a, called a pre-qualification. Sometimes it's a pre-approval. But essentially what it is is that they have vetted the information and said, okay, based on the information you've provided to me, you can afford a house up to X dollar amount. What, what kind of things are you gonna ask? So let's say I come in, I say, oh, I wanna buy this cute little house, and they start me on the process, because you know, I don't know how to do this, I've just walked in, first time for me. What are some of the things that they're gonna ask me? Sure, we ask a lot of questions. Um, so I shouldn't be intimidated by that. That's just your job is to ask a lot of questions. It's not like it, you're asking questions because you're thinking, okay, strike one, strike two, strike three, you can't do this. Right, no, the, actually the information is so that we can pair you with what makes the most sense for you. And the more information that I know, 
the better of a program and a better fit you're going to have. Um, but I do, I like to joke with customers when they come in, like, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. Your doctor and your mortgage lender probably know more about you than anybody else. And it's just because we're trying to make sure that we have all of that information. We're not sharing the information, but we need it to properly qualify you. So by qualifying your, how much can I borrow? Yeah. So we're going to ask you questions about, we'll ask you personal information questions, your name, your date of birth, your social security number, things like that. We'll also ask you about where you live, where you've lived. Why um, does that matter? I mean, because I want to buy this cute little house. Yeah. But what we're trying to understand is, do you have a history of paying rent? Can we show that you've okay. paid rent on time? Or are you living at home with mom and dad? Mm -hmm. That's okay too. We're just trying to understand your overall picture. And if there is a history there of rent, if you haven't owned a mortgage before, we can use that to say, okay, this person is responsible. They've made their rent on time yeah. for the last two years. So it's an indicator that you're going to make your mortgage payments on time. So we'll ask things like that. We'll also ask you about employment and your employment history. Mm -hmm. And we'll ask you about your income. And the reason we're asking about your income is so we can see, based on your income, how much you can qualify for for a mortgage. Because as a, as a mortgage loan officer or anybody that I go to for a mortgage, they basically want to know, can I repay that money? That's exactly I mean, that's, it. That's the bottom line. You're going to give me some money. Can I repay it? Yep. If you think I can repay a lot of money, you'll you'll let me borrow a lot of money. Right. If you think I can maybe not pay back that much money, you'll lend me you'll lend me less money. Exactly. Yep. So you're basically asking all these questions to find out are you going to get your money back? Yes. Yep, it's it's really that is our security in the whole thing. We don't we're not in the real estate business. We are You in don't want to business. own my house. You don't want to own your house. We want you to own your house. So we're just making sure that you can qualify by paying us back. So you you said things that I can easily rattle off, you know, my name, social security number, where I've lived. Am I going to have to bring you like paper documents? At some point you will, you can walk in the door and say, I'd really like to talk to somebody about a mortgage. And you can get pre-qualified. And again, depending on the financial institution, their program might be a little different. Um, but you can get qualified based on just the stated information. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm telling you I make. This is where I've lived. This is how much I pay in rent. This is how much I have in the bank. Um, and we can take all that information, compile it, we will run your credit, and we will give you a pre-qualification letter. And that will say, oh, guess what? Here's how much you can spend. It will say, yep, congratulations. You've been pre-qualified for this amount. Um, now go find your house. Now, what if that amount is not how much my little pretty little house costs? What if it's less than what my pretty little house that I want to buy costs? So there are a couple of things. Um, that is sometimes it means that maybe that house just isn't the right house for right now. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes it means that maybe you're fortunate that you're a really good saver and you've saved a down payment so we can combine the loan and the down payment and you would be able to afford the house at that price. Mm -hmm. um, or sometimes if you're in a situation where you might have mom or dad or somebody else mm -hmm. that has the ability to gift you some funds, you might be able to afford it at that point. So a down payment is simply the amount of money that I have saved to put towards that house. Yep. So when I go into the bank, I should be able to, in a, in a perfect world, be able to say, oh, look, I want to buy, let's pretend it's a $200,000 house. I've saved maybe $20,000 of my own money. So for that two hundred thousand dollar house, I'll I'll give you know I'll give you twenty thousand dollars, and you'll you'll lend me the rest. Right. Do I have to have a down payment? You don't have to. There are there are um, tons of programs out there. From, so by programs, you mean different ways to borrow the money? Yeah. There's different loans in the way that they can structure the loan so that you're able to qualify for the house that you want. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of first time home buyer programs, there are programs geared specifically towards first time home buyers and there are programs that are geared towards um, 
people that have no down payments. Mm -hmm. Maine is a pretty rural state, mm -hmm. and so most of the state qualifies for rural development loans, and those have um, basically little or no down payment. So there are ways that you can do a loan with no down payment, but there are also ways where you might be fortunate, again, that you've saved a lot of money and you can put a down payment down. And all that really does is it changes the monthly payments and it might change the interest rates. It's just going to structurally change the program that you qualify for. So as part of a mortgage, there's I always think of it as three parts. There's how much I'm gonna be able to borrow, yep. which is what you're gonna tell me in the letter that says, yay, you've been pre-approved or pre-qualified. There's how long I'm gonna borrow the money for. Yep. And then there's the interest rate, which is basically the fee that the bank's gonna charge me. I mean, interest rates are basically how you guys make your money. It's right. fees. Yep. So the amount I'm gonna get through that pre-approval letter and then I'm going to have to decide how many years I want to pay you back for that Correct. For that house. Most of the time, isn't it 30 years that when you sign that piece of paper and say, oh, I bought my house, I'm basically signing up to pay you back 30 years worth of payments. Right. That's probably the most standard term. Mm -hmm. There are shorter ones, but 30 years is the longest term, and it's probably the most standard that people elect. And that is the agreed upon term. So every month, you're going to make us a payment and it's going to have interest that's accrued mm -hmm. and you are going to make those monthly payments over 30 years. You can pay it off early mm -hmm. if you wanted to, um, but that is the term of the loan. And then the interest rate, that gets dictated by a couple of things. Again, back to what type of loan program we put you into may or have a different interest rate. Mm -hmm. um, some institutions have slightly different interest rates for different programs. And then also um, what the markets are doing because interest rates um, run off of the market. Mm -hmm. So when I'm looking for a loan, let's say I'll just do a 30 year, 30 years, which it sounds intimidating to people like, okay, you're signing up for 30 years worth of debt. Right. But that's, that's the norm. It is. So the only question I'm going to have then for a bank is how much are you willing to lend me and what the interest rate is? Mm -hmm. And will each place do, will, like maybe I can borrow 200000 from one place. Will another place let me borrow 300000 Or is that going to be, I mean, should I, that's what I'm wondering. Should I shop around and figure out who's going to let me borrow the most money? So... I don't think you'll find that there will be swings to that degree mm -hmm. between institutions and um, types of lenders. What I think you will find is, I, I always tell people, shop around because what really at the end of the day matters is the fit. Again, that lender is going to ask you a lot of questions uh -huh. and they're basically going to work with you. Some people, they, they know right away, this is the house I want to buy. They go yep. under contract and 45 days later they've closed on their loan and the transaction's done. Other people aren't ready right away and we work with them for over a year before they buy a house. So you wanna make sure that you're comfortable with that person and having conversations about your finances, employment history, things like that. So I tell people, you know, meet a couple people, see what they have for programs, see what they can offer, interest rates probably are not going to have wild swings. They mm -hmm. might be an eighth of a percent different between institutions. Um, and some programs are going to be set standard interest rates. It doesn't matter which institution you go to. It's really, to me, it's really about that fit and who you're comfortable with. So so go to different places. Yeah, I'd say go to a couple. Um, you want to do it within a relatively... Um, close period of time because if each institution pre-qualifies you and you pull your credit, then you don't want to pull your credit too many times over a long period of time because mm -hmm. that could hurt your credit score. Um, but I would say, you know, shop a couple of places and usually you're not going to lock your interest rate or lock your program in at that early stage where you're just mm -hmm. shopping around. When you lock your interest rate in, when you actually move forward with the next steps in the mortgage process, um, that is when you want to kind of decide, okay, this is the lender I want to okay. work with, and it's when you're under contract on a specific property. How much does this cost then 
to when I go to talk to these different people, I mean, you mentioned working with people for a year. Is that going to cost me anything? No. No, it's just your time. And again, I think it's about the right fit for the person that you're working with. Um, a lot of first time home buyers, like you said, they may or may not know if they're ready. Some of them yeah. are ready, but some aren't. Some haven't had their credit pulled and they find that when they get their credit pulled, maybe they don't have bad credit, but they don't have any credit. And so oh, that's yeah. another situation where we need to help somebody establish some credit or establish alternative credit. So it's not always just a quick, I want to buy this walk house in, and I'm going yeah. to walk in and I'm going to walk out the next day with the house. What are some barriers that you see people run into with getting a mortgage? You said maybe they don't have good credit or they have no credit. Yep. Um, credit is an interesting thing because it really is something that you want to, you want to establish credit as early as you can, but you need to manage it responsibly. So having poor credit, um, depending on what's on the credit report, can dictate what your score would be. So like when I bought my first house, I, I was awful with credit. Probably the only reason they gave me the house was because I had a big down payment. Sure. And that probably mitigated the, oh wow, she clearly can't handle her money, but you know, we'll give her, we'll give her the mortgage. Right. That was kind of your security yes. in it for the bank and they felt comfortable with that. But, um, yeah, making payments on time, not letting things go to collections, all of those things are going to help you establish responsible credit and establish a good credit score. Um, and then also having credit cards, not at their, um, maximums mm -hmm. all the time, actually having available credit, using your credit, that's another thing. Sometimes people forget, you know, they, they, maybe they're in transition that they've sold a home and it's going to be a while before they buy another one and they pay cash for everything. Yep. That's a situation where they are doing financially well, but we don't have any way to show it because we have no history of payment yep. on the credit report. And that's really what the credit report is there for. When I then go to get my, I've, I've, let's say I've overcome over all these barriers, I go come to get my mortgage. There's different kinds of mortgages. You've talked about the fit. There's the 30 years yep. with the plain old interest rate. And I know that means my, if I get a 30 year loan at let's pretend a 5% interest rate, that means my payment's gonna be the same for all 30 years. Yes. But I keep hearing about variable interest rates. Sure. And my understanding is that's where maybe I get, maybe instead of a 5% interest rate, I get a 3% interest rate, which, hey, that sounds better than 5%. I'm paying less. But it can creep up over time. Yep. So what you're talking about are adjustable rate mortgages. And oftentimes people refer to them as an arm that's the oh the adjustable rate, adjustable mortgage. rate mortgage. Okay, yes. I get the arm now. Yep. Um, and so what that does is that usually is done on a term of thirty years, like those fixed interest rate uh -huh. mortgages would be. But what's different about it is that the um, adjustable rate has a period of being fixed, so it's not fixed for the life of the loan. It might be fixed for the first five years, uh -huh. and that's usually at a lower interest rate than what the market interest rate for a fixed loan would be at. So that would be like, if I got the fixed rate, it might be the 5%, right. but the adjustable rate, the arm thing would be at 3%. Maybe it's at 3%, and it's fixed for those first five years. And then after that, it has the ability to adjust and every program can be different. Most of the time it has the ability to adjust once a year. So it's not going to adjust on you every month. It's not going to have oh, okay. big wild swings with interest rate, um, but they're usually incremental. And then it will also have a cap on it. So it says that maybe you start out with a 3% interest rate for five years and then every year it can adjust once a year it will have a certain amount that it can adjust up to that year maybe it can only go two percent above what your uh -huh. standard was every year but then it'll also have a cap and maybe that cap is it can't exceed five percent of that 
beginning interest rate. So you'll have a cap on that. Um, they, over the years, we've heard really kind of horror stories yeah. with adjustable rate mortgages. I don't think people use them as often, but there is definitely, like we talked about fit earlier, uh -huh. there can be a reason for somebody may want to use an adjustable rate mortgage. If they know this is going to be, maybe this is my starter home and I know that in two years I am not going to live here anymore, I'm going to sell. That might be a situation where you say, okay, well, let's at least give you five years at that fixed yeah. rate yep. so you have a buffer because, you know, sometimes plans don't always, we, we don't always follow through. Um, so those are situations that maybe that would make sense for you. I, again, think that most first-time buyers and kind of most buyers in general kind of gravitate towards the security of just having mm -hmm. a fixed rate for the whole life So of you the know loan. it's never gonna, do yeah. you ever feel like a therapist when you're a mortgage loan officer? Do, yeah. do you feel, because I feel like you go in, you tell somebody, here's my plans, here's my money, here's my income, here's where I've worked. And sometimes it's like, oh, I have really great news. I can qualify you for that beautiful little house that you're uh -huh. looking for, or good news, I can qualify you for even more than you thought you qualified uh -huh. for. Those are the good conversations. The other conversations are, Maybe you're just not ready yet. Uh -huh. I, you know, this is the amount we can qualify you for. It could be an amount that is less than what you were hoping for. Mm -hmm. It might be an amount that still you could find a house in that price range. It's just range. not going to be my cute just little not house. Your cute little house. Um, or it could be no, I have my heart set on that house, and I'm going to wait, and I'm going to save, and maybe. The job I'm in, I know in a couple of years there will be, you know, some income potential to um, raise my salary. Then I'm going to wait and I'm going to buy that house. So again, it's it's very specific. I've never seen. I've been doing mortgages for about 15 years. I've never seen two transactions exactly the same. It's it's not two people aren't exactly the same. So everybody's a little different, and every every time is a little different. So thank you for thank you for telling us about that because I do think everybody is different. So if you're watching this, I hope that you can take these words of advice. And if you're thinking about buying a house or um, um, starting to save for a house, that this will give you the advice you need so you too can become a homeowner. So thank you for watching Money Matters and have a great week.